Hello, everybody, and you're so very, very welcome to this week's edition of Social Talents, The Shortlist. This is episode 107, I believe. We've on there, absolutely flown through these episodes over the last couple of months, and we've grown such a significant amount of, of content and insights and learning. And here's the thing. Obviously, that has taken a huge amount of time to build, and it takes time to listen to or watch live if you're watching this this particular edition live it takes time to do that and that's the topic of this week's talk is about finding the time for learning my name is holly fawcett i'm the director of content here at social talent and as director of content my main remit of course is about building content for people to learn and something that constantly comes up uh, that people has as, as some form of almost an objection to learning is i just don't have time I don't have time for this. I am so busy. I've got so much work on. I need to learn how to do this other thing. But yet, I just don't have the time in order to do that because I've got so much things on my to-do list. It's kind of a chicken and egg scenario with regards to your performance. For every single person, whether you're an individual uh, contributor, whether you are a people manager, whether you are an executive, et cetera, any, any uh, type of role in an organization, your performance will depend on your capacity to uh, impart information and use the knowledge that you have. But of course, you must gain that knowledge in the first place. Um, so on the subject of this particular talk, despite all the statistics and the importance, of course, that we all place on learning and development and growing within our roles, the greatest barrier to success is always going to be time. And think about it like not have time to do exercise. Um, but we will, of course, have to make time in order to do that. L&D is as essential to our performance as exercise is to our health um, and movement is to our health. Um, there's so many benefits for employees, for employers, et cetera. But carving out the dedicated space in a very, very busy diary is a recurring challenge that every single organization faces. So on this week's show, we have Sabrina Pitaluga, who is the Talent Acquisition Manager for Experienced Hire Recruiting in Boston Consulting Group. And Sabrina joins us to chat about how to make time for learning and development. So we're going to discuss the importance of L&D. We're going to learn some ticks, some, sorry, excuse me, some tips and some tricks to how to learn continuously and also some tactics on how best to retain and use the knowledge that you acquire in training. So you're very welcome, Sabrina. Would you like to introduce yourself to our audience, please? Hi, Oli. I'm very pleased to, to be here with you today, to, to meet finally, almost in person. Almost. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's a pleasure. And as uh, you, you shared before, I'm Sabrina. I'm from BCG, Boston Consulting Group. I'm part of the EMISA uh, EH team. That means I'm covering, together with my, my team members, uh, a big region, Europe, Middle East, South America, and Africa. And mm -hmm. for people with, uh, who already gain some experience in, uh, in the business. And today I'm, I'm here to talk about one of, my, uh, one of the topics that is close to my heart, uh, that is learning, even if I'm part of the yeah, HR, broader HR and recruiting. But uh, um, I think that the learning and development, of course, as one of the key activities, key department in each company. So very happy to, to, to be here today. Thank you. And as you say, that is an enormous region to be covering, the uh, Europe, Middle East, South America and Africa um, for experienced higher learning, that is, uh, or sorry, experienced higher recruiting is extraordinary. So how many people are in your team, do you mind me asking? Uh, the whole team is composed by around uh, 20 people, but we are we are growing more. <laughs> yes, there's a a lot of a lot of tasks I would imagine to share just amongst a very small group, a reasonably small group of people with with only 20 um 20 pairs of hands, I suppose, to get all that work done. So does does I'm too busy for learning happen in your team? Does that ex does that excuse crop up, especially when you've got such a high volume of requisition load, for example, or high volume of tasks to be done amongst such a small team? Uh, yes, of course. Um, basically, we are covering different time zones. So mm -hmm. from uh, yeah, South America, minus six uh, so far um, compared to Italy, uh, where I'm based, and plus two for Middle East. So, of course, uh, uh, the agendas are pretty busy uh, and uh, 
but this is not an excuse. <laughs> Let me be bold not to do some, uh, some trainings. And uh, thanks to technology, now we can definitely um, own more our time. Um, I, not so recently, but all, I always remember uh, one report from the World Economic Forum about the top skills uh, in 2025. And basically 2025 will be tomorrow evening. <laughs> and uh, yes, it's almost here. And okay, there is critical thinking, problem solving, leadership. But one of the, the one who struck me the most is active learning and learning strategies. So to mm -hmm. learn and how to learn is uh, a skill, a top skill. And this is amazing. So no excuses to find time because it's definitely mandatory to, um, to achieve company and the personal, professional, of course, goals. Um, mm -hmm. Just to, um, of course, from the company point of, company's point of view, uh, it's definitely relevant because of the new challenges. We are in a VUCA world, so of course, we need some skills uh, um, not present in the past uh, or something de definitely different. Um, and it's not only to learn new skills, but how to learn. And so it's also my tips will be how to retain knowledge because we can attend tons of trainings, hours and hours on in-person and online trainings. But with, if we do only with one eye doing mm. something else in the meantime and we know that sometimes it happens uh by through different uh, i don't know zoom teams uh, meetings uh, trainings sometimes we are doing something else at the end of the day it won't be uh, relevant to have follow such uh, such trainings so the idea is of course to be always focus and to get the most from the yeah the trainings that we are supposed to 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 follow to to attend um mm -hmm. and uh, of course the companies are to survive and of course to grow and needs uh, need uh, um people with uh, highly highly skilled people mm -hmm. um so it's uh, also beneficial for the companies and also why not to have more committed and happier people i'm definitely happy at bcg uh, not to okay not to kind of advertising but uh, we have the opportunity to um to access a lot of trainings uh, social talent for instance but mm -hmm. and for me it's a plus Definitely. I have the opportunity to attend as many trainings I want. Of course, it, it depends on my agenda, but uh, at least uh, um, 30 minutes per week. And yes, and for me, it's, uh, it's definitely a plus. Um, so that yes. 30 minutes per week, 30 minutes sounds perfectly reasonable. I mean, to anybody I've ever said, 30 minutes a week, which is, by the way, 1% of active working time that we are paid to do in most full-time, five-day week, eight-hour day work days that we generally contract our people to do. 30 minutes a week is just a shade over 1% of that. And when you say, can you carve out 1% of your working week, excuse me, <clears throat> every week to, to doing some learning, everybody I've asked that question to has always said, oh yeah, I can do that. That's no problem. I can do 30 minutes a week. And yet, <laughs> and yet actually doing it are two very different things. So what do you feel is the barrier to finding that time in your agenda? As you say, you, can, you have the opportunity to take all of these courses and classes at your organization within BCG, you have access to huge amounts of, of content through your different learning management systems, et cetera, including social talent. But how do you find that time in your agenda? Is it protected for you or is it something that you need to ring fence for yourself? Um, both of them. 
I mean, mm. for in-person trainings, of course, I have to put boundaries uh, because I want to protect uh, this specific time because it's for my personal and professional growth. Also, again, it's a very uncertain word. So to be more skilled is also removing anxiety from my shoulders. I'm, mm. I'm gaining knowledge. I'm becoming more and more an expert in on some topics. I, I can uh, rely on my skills. And this is also yeah, reducing our anxiety. Why not? It's also for my well-being. So um, I want to put some boundaries for in trainings, uh, in, in person trainings, uh, because of course there are dedicated timing, uh, specific days. But thanks uh, or because of the COVID, we also we now knows that we we know basically that we have uh, some uh, lot of uh, it depends on the topic, but online platforms. And uh, um, this is definitely more flexible approach, at least from my side. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not keen anymore, to be honest, to, to stay in a class, in a room for eight hours to attend a very long training, kind of a frontal one with no Q&A or only at the end. I like in-person in trainings. Uh, I, I will be very honest, but not some sort of trainings. Um, in reality, with the online platforms, 30 minutes is completely feasible because you can uh, um, split in different chunks. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, and also rely on technology. I mean, I can use the, um, the desktop, uh, the, the, the website, or the mobile app. So mm -hmm. I'm going today, I, I'm in the office, I commuted. So during my, uh, the underground, it was so hot in Milan these days. But, oh gosh, I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and not to think about uh, how hot is Milano these days, I took uh, two trainings, 10 minutes, very easy peasy. Uh, then when I work from home and so I'm alone and not, I don't know, talking with my colleagues, uh, coffee chat, you, you don't know, but you are often with me during my coffee, uh, sorry, my coffee break, uh, <laughs> Johnny, John Blastelica. So you are with me basically five minutes, uh, the, the perfect timing for a coffee. Okay. Mm -hmm. an espresso one, of course, mm -hmm. uh, one video. So it's, uh, and to, yes, kind of uh, saving very small chunk of time. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the week, uh, half an hour is uh, definitely feasible. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, uh, in addition, um, of course, we need, uh, we all need uh, a clear learning path because it's not about doing trainings about everything uh, with no, with an, with a, we have to do with a clear objective. Yes. And in this sense, I think that the leaders uh, can play a key role. Mm -hmm. So I want to definitely pick up on um, leadership's role in that, if I might just put a pin in that for two minutes and um, dig into something you were saying about, you know, using the difference between the likes of classroom type of training whereby you're in a physical space with fellow learners as well learning from a teacher or some form of instructor and you're simply listening to something you might be given an exercise try this out now whatever in a classroom type of environment that's very traditional type of training versus the likes of um where you access your lms through your desktop computer through your through a mobile app or whatever else and, and therefore are able to pick up on learning in small little chunks, whether it's commuting on the metro or it's um, on your coffee break. And I'm delighted to be with you during your coffee break <laughs> um, for some of those. The the first article that we got in terms of our normal format for this show, we obviously look at some articles that are in the news um, with regards to our particular topic. And our first article from this was from the Harvard Business Review is build learning into your employees workflow from Bruce Rudy. Uh, from Bruce Rudy. 
a really, really, really helpful article. I'll put the link into the show notes for those who listen to the podcast. If you're on the live stream, it's into the chat now. But this article um, I found so helpful about precisely what you're saying, giving people that opportunity to utilize technology so that you're building learning into people's ordinary work day so that you clock up those 30 minutes so fast, maybe even a lot more than 30 minutes. It could even be an hour, two hours of learning over the course of a week when you find those little snippets of time. Um, And I felt it was very interesting to look at Rudy's position, I suppose, in terms of some of the challenges that L&D have. Now, you're working in an HR function. You know, the investment that HR spends on learning and development the return on that investment cannot always be very easily measured. And therefore, it can be a huge challenge to continue to invest in that year on year if you're not actually seeing real results from it. So some of the obviously the bigger issues is that we're just, you know, the, the content is is so vast, we're not really able to see that return. But where you're saying you have a clear direction of what that learning should be, you give people a clear learning path of what they're able to do, and they give them the freedom of time to be able to slot it in at their workplace. Have you seen a return on the investment that you personally spend on your learning and your colleagues as well, and how they spend their time doing learning, a return in their their capacity and their capability to do certain tasks, their ability to, to deliver on results, or you know, achieving towards a higher objective, a more strategic objective with the organization, et cetera, in terms of upskilling on particular, more broader themes, for example. Tell me about some of that ROI for using technology for learning rather than the traditional classroom type learning. Mm. Uh, First of all, data is king. So we have to measure everything. Also, uh, in terms of, uh, yeah, uh, amount of money that we are putting on uh, on trainings, uh, we have to address uh, differently our efforts or not, or with, uh, I don't know, some other providers, some other type of trainings, uh, um, online, offline, and, and so on and so forth. We have to be very careful about metrics, and we have to define upfront, uh, but ideally, um, very practical example from my side. I I I could see in my daily work. Uh, I mean, um, at the very beginning, I was not so sure that selling selling techniques were strictly and strongly related to uh, recruiting function. I was wrong. Uh, <laughs> spoiler alert! I was wrong. But Aren't not, we all? <laughs> yeah. And, I'm, I was not so confident in selling something, but I took some trainings uh, and, uh, and I, of course, uh, to have some ROI, you have to put in uh, practical, absolutely. You, you have to practice, 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 because only mm-hmm. practice makes perfect. But mm-hmm. I put into very practical exercises, LinkedIn email. So very just to shaping differently my communication to candidates to attract um, so at the very beginning and i've seen that the, the uh, response rate growth plus 20 percent so from 30 to 50 so and it's uh, definitely a very good result from my side that's then, phenomenal. Course, so that, that's yeah. a growth of 80%, but certainly 20 percentage points. Um, you can big yourself up there even more. It almost doubled your response rate, which is incredible, right? So those, what you're saying is, is um, there's a phrase I don't particularly like using very often, but it's because it's a bit toxic sometimes. But we w- definitely want to work smarter, not harder, uh, not harder, right? Yeah. And something that you alluded to, for example, one of the mentors who you watch on your training is John Vlastalika, who's attended on this podcast a couple of times. And, and I'm sure anybody who's who's familiar with social talent training and recruiting toolbox separately as well would know John Vlastalika very, very well. But one of the key, um, I, I have two like me- most memorable quotes from John Vlastalika. The first is misalignment is the root of all evil, which is very true miscommunication and misalignment but the second is try harder is not a strategy and that's work in general isn't it 
constantly just trying to like, oh, no, no, I'm just going to scrub harder and it'll eventually, you know, work out isn't the case. I think we fundamentally need to like change up what it is that we do realize that we're selling, for example, where before we never realized that before um, and get into doing things fundamentally differently if we want to see different results. And therefore that requires learning. Yes. Yeah. It's instead of try harder, try differently. Yes. Absolutely. And it's a matter also of learning by doing, because at the very, of course, the plus 20% was not from day zero. So I tried several types of communication. And then I found out, of course, following tips and, and suggestions from the trainings. But mm -hmm. then, of course, it's uh, uh, my daily routine, my daily job, I have to of course, tailor made a bit on, on myself to, to become also more, yeah, um, more true in, in a sense. It's not, it's the, the, to bring my very, myself in the communication and it works. It works mm -hmm. quite well. So I don't know if it's a secret sauce. I don't know, but uh, the results are there. So I'm pretty happy. <laughs> I would be very, very, very happy if I was getting nearly double my response rate. Um, so congratulations and well done. Um, and certainly like sharing that knowledge with others is a form of learning, right? It's a um, coming back to simply just listening to somebody tell you how to do something rather than listening to and sharing and learning from stories of others who have tried it this way, realize that doesn't work. Tried it this other way, got a slightly different, it's a different result, but not quite where I was going. And figuring out how things work for yourself and being able to, if we, if, so think about for me, right, from an instructional perspective, when we're looking at it from a very theoretical point of view, as you move up the chain of the complexity of the type of learning that you're doing, if you're simply listening in a very passive way we remember like five percent of that over the, after a month yeah. even a week we'll just we won't remember that but if we take it that level um higher and continue to really add and elevate our learning to that we're analyzing we're evaluating we're evaluating this new information versus our old information but as we create new things out of it as we create a new process for ourselves as we take a, a little bit of the ingredients that I learned in this training and a little bit of the ingredients that I learned from this other training and mush them together into my own, as you say, secret sauce. That is when we fully learn something. That is the essence of, of learning. And it's that practical piece, but it's not just watching a video that's a five minute long conversation or five minute long discussion. There is, it, it builds and adults learn through just absorbing lots of different information in lots of different formats. And so that kind of brings me into your, your point around leaders and also the, the second article that we have for discussion today, which is from HRD uh, magazine, which is half of employees, quote, don't have the time, isn't that very familiar, to upskill at work. Again, I'm going to put the link into the show notes um, for you to be able to read for yourselves. Alternatively, it's in the it's in the private chat. Sorry, it's in the chat function if you are watching from our live stream. But the not in, not having time, I think there's an interesting perspective here. Obviously, that employees just simply just drop their hands and say, "I don't have time for learning." But actually, there's lots of different types of learning uh, formats that are out there. For example, conversations, or watching a video for five minutes, or going on YouTube and figuring something out, or learning by doing. Right. Those are all opportunities and formats of learning that perhaps people just don't recognize is learning time. So actually, people don't have time, but they really are learning at the same time, in my view. What's your opinion on that? Um, I think that basically uh, leaders are a very uh, key role in, mm -hmm. in, in being facilitators for this kind of activities that are relevant, so relevant, uh, not only um, in the short run, but in the long run. Because mm -hmm. if I um, use my time, if I invest a few hours today, I will have better results, better um, work less mm -hmm. uh, in tomorrow. So it's an investment with a good ROI. Mm -hmm. um, so, of course, leaders has to, to stress 
uh, this part uh, that is I, I completely understand uh, that your agenda is uh, fully packed today mm -hmm. but what about tomorrow what about this week um, I like in the um, I, in one of the, the, the two articles the the nudge the nudge part so kind mm -hmm. of gentle nudge to remind to act as a reminder uh, probably the two main roles are act as a reminder to stress the importance. Um, I personally, probably I bother my, my colleagues, but I send a kind of very not fancy slides, very simple ones. But okay, I did these trainings and my key takeaways are one, two, three. Mm -hmm. And I think that these are valuable and you could enjoy just to kind of uh, pre-screening, let's put this way, also because I know my colleagues, uh, so I think that they could ben benefit from uh, some specific trainings. Um, on the other end, uh, kind of uh, um, acting as a role model, because I cannot say people, okay, even if you have a busy agenda, you have to do it. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, uh, not doing anything from my own uh, learning and development. Uh, so, of course, we should, I, I personally try to, uh, now it's an habit uh, more than uh, a, a challenge, but at the very beginning, each new habit uh, is a bit painful at the very beginning because mm -hmm. you have to create uh, something new. Uh, mm -hmm. But then, uh, of course, when the habit is created, uh, it's rewarding. It's simply rewarding. Uh, of course, uh, um, a third point, um, leaders has to be kind of advisors, not only to suggest trainings, but also to, um, yeah, suggesting um, in respect of the, the, the person, I don't know, capabilities, needs, uh, and so on and so forth. And a good idea is always to put uh, in the career plan, we have a structured career plan, mm -hmm. uh, the type of trainings uh, or the topics uh, different people should work on. And mm -hmm. then see the, the before and after. I don't know, um, attending training, uh, sorry, attending meetings uh, uh, with, uh, yeah, for us, uh, is uh, definitely um, important to act as a talent advisor to uh, our stakeholders, internal stakeholders. So ideally, before and after, I have seen uh, great differences in one specific person because this person worked a lot on this specific uh, type of uh, um, skill. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, at the end, uh, it was successful. So, yeah. mm, of course, to try what is your best uh, suit um, and to, to refine, again, learning by doing and doing mistakes. Why not? It's yeah. allowed to, to, to make mistakes. <laughs> oh, of course. Some of the best lessons I've ever learned in my life have generally been driven by mistakes, which is you know, difficult, right? Their mistakes are painful um, and we tend to shy away from them. But at least if mistakes are helpful in avoiding that mistake again, for instance, um, but certainly just figuring out, look, we just discovered one of the many ways that this doesn't work yeah, <laughs> um, no, no. Can, can be helpful. No, uh, one of my favorite quote is sometimes we win and sometimes we learn. Yes. Yes, and I like that. I thought you were going to say sometimes we lose. I'm like, yes, I know. But also, yes, sometimes <laughs> I hope all the time we learn. Um, I like to akin, I, I, I like to compare rather learning a skill with beginning an exercise routine for the first time or an exercise, you know, just just deciding I'm going to be somebody who exercises, um, which as we like we're humans we are in the 21st century we've we've been around right we haven't dug our heads underneath the sand for a very like so i'm sure this is not news to anybody that exercise is important for our health and for our life and for 
um, living a living a good balanced life that we need to be able to to have a level of exercise or a level of, of ability to move and try and push that as much as we can. Um, but starting off an exercise plan, whether you are a frequent runner and now you've decided I'm going to take up weights or you've done very, very little movement and that I just need to go walking longer distances and, and starting up that, it is always difficult in the beginning. Yeah. Um, but unless we see results reasonably quickly, um, it tends to be very demotivating sometimes that I'm not seeing the results that I wanted. I thought this was going to be instantaneous. So going back to your point you made a few moments earlier about the leader being that key role in facilitating learning, but also being that champion, recognizing where they've made great strengths or great strides and improvements in their performance. Because, well, look, I see that you've we're trying to implement this this skill into our daily practice in, for example, in your organization, in talent acquisition, we're really looking to deliver a better service to services along the way, certainly being, being able to deliver a better effective process for managing requisitions, for example. But this is a, you know, here's where I see you've implemented that, that learning there and here's the result. Isn't that great? So it's almost like that, you know, when you see the first inch come off if your if your goal is to is to lose weight around your waist, for example, being able to tie the button on your jeans a little bit easier, seeing those little things, those little quick wins, um, can be so motivating to learners to go, oh yeah, I will, that is great. I, I did implement that. That's brilliant. And now I want to keep going. Um, but as you say, learning becomes habitual. We are always looking for the learning in things where we fail, where we make successes, where other people have failed. We're always looking for those insights or those opportunities to pick up new information. And um, our brains suddenly become, going back to your point at the very, very, very beginning of this conversation, that World Economic Forum report for 2025, learning strategies and knowing how to learn are critical skills for anybody to operate in this world um, in, in any way going forward. Has that kind of inspired you and your team to take on other, like, as you say, you're trying to carve out those particular times in your day and, and really show people and share with them the things that you've learned, but have they decided they will also send back their feedback about what what are the things one two three that I learned from this course as well and have a discussion like how is your learning adapted and changed over time as you've become more able and capable of learning as a team um it's uh, it, it depends of course it's not on a weekly basis one of the two articles that very insightful but it is suggest it's suggested to to um, save a weekly time to talk about, uh, probably on a weekly basis, could be a bit too much in my mm -hmm. experience, mm -hmm. because of course, uh, busy agendas, and then not only trainings, but also reflection on trainings. Uh, but definitely the idea is a super good one, mm -hmm. not only to, to do trainings, but also to reflect in terms of sharing ideas, sharing best practices. Okay, my methodology, my point of view, my uh, the angle I use to do X, Y, Z is this one. Do you have other um, ideas coming from, I don't know, different trainings uh, you, you have uh, followed in, in, the last, uh, in the last weeks? I don't know, a new framework, uh, a, a new template. Uh, um, to be honest, I'm a very lazy person, so I'm not <laughs> taking notes, uh, but my life uh, is saved by screenshots. Mm -hmm. So uh, while uh, following some trainings, uh, and it's a, a very personal suggestion for me, it works. I don't know if for other people, but uh, to take uh, uh, a screenshot and then uh, uh, put a label naming uh, uh, with, of course, the specific topics. And it helps me to also to recollect uh, not only 
now but also in the coming months i have a special social talent folder in, on my <laughs> laptop and uh, full of uh, screenshots coming from uh, the, the trainings and uh, of course i'm ready to share um i don't know someone don't have doesn't have time or enough time i can also share the very key takeaways and I know that other people can do the same to me. Mm -hmm. Not to save in time, but also it's a matter of networking, sharing, because the, unfortunately on the online part, what is missing is the human touch. Because you cannot, uh, of course, talk to the, the people in front of you. So the missing part could be done after. So in sharing and... Uh, um, and to be honest, yes, the, to have uh, a final goal, uh, so not to, I don't know, I want to run a marathon in two months, completely impossible, but I want to start uh, ex doing, I don't know, a, a light run or something like this, I don't know, not three times, five times a week, N nonsense, because the first time you are miss. Uh, uh the the i don't know the morning run you will be fully demotivated um i am also a coach and i deeply believe in the power of the action plan the action mm. plan has to be feasible but also uh to to achieve the goal you have to uh to yeah to create your own action plan step small step by small step so uh, and for the um, the trainings uh, to the the final goal in uh, uh, yes in having trainings is not for the I don't know because I like training so much uh, and I want to learn everything in the world is because I want to grow I want to become an expert on a specific topic so the idea is to of also to, to have a, a clear path, uh, to uh, have the opportunity to monitorize your results. And you can also see on, I don't know, in, on a daily basis, but on a weekly basis, yes. Mm -hmm. That's really key, actually. And I think it might be very helpful maybe as we wrap up for the final um, couple of minutes of our, of our conversation to dig into a couple of these wonderful tips by the way and I am raging because I put away my pen about 45 minutes ago before we started having this conversation I decided to clear my desk which was a stupid mistake because I really needed to take down that note um but as you say like some of the um some of the key things for learners to get going or even just to improve your your current ability to learn and remember you know whether you are an individual employee or you are as any you're an individual contributor or you manage people, or you manage an entire business unit, or even an entire organization, if you're a CEO, for example, you're still an individual person, and therefore you have to grow this ability to learn. So looking at the um, the action plan with the objective, starting with that as a goal, rather than this kind of like, I just need to learn for learning's sake, you're right, it should be driven by an agenda. There has to be something that I want to get out of this because otherwise, as you're right, as soon as you miss that morning run um, or you break the habit and, you know, you you missed your session for the 30 minutes or you didn't do any training this week, you become completely demotivated or you don't see results fast enough because what are you, well, what's the result about if you don't have something to measure it against, against your goal, right? Mm -hmm. Um Taking screenshots is another really brilliant uh, thing. I need to remember that as well. So taking screenshots... Actually, I think what might be very helpful, maybe one of my tips that I wanted to share um, about a kind of a strategy as your own individual learner, think, speaking to you one on one, whether you are Sabrina speaking in front of me mm -hmm. or you are uh, a listener listening to this on a podcast is figure out your learning style. So, Sabrina, you sound to me like you are a reader learner or a visual learner um, because you don't like. Uh, as you say, you're being lazy. I don't think you are being lazy, um, but you sound like you, um, you know, by taking screenshots and, and taking a, you know, a detailed note of what the precise this is, you're able to go back and read the thing that was on the screen at that time. But uh, there's four types of learning styles and maybe one of these will resonate with you. There's a visual learner, somebody who learns by looking at things um, usually or maybe investigating something what that looks like. 
there's an audible learner or auditory learner, somebody who likes to listen to something. So perhaps if you love listening to podcasts, for example, or audiobooks, that might give you a really good hint that you're potentially like an audible type of learner. Or maybe you like to listen and write down things at the same time. You can be a combination of learning styles. So then there's visual auditory. The R is a is a um is a reader. So somebody who likes to read words that are on screens or just read the transcript of something, loves reading books, and that's how they learn. And then lastly is K, which is kinesthetic. So V-A-R-K or VARK is the model. And kinesthetic learners are people who love to touch, feel, press this button, figure out how this works. Think about any engineer you know. <laughs> they are more likely than anybody to be a kinesthetic learner. And I think generally when you're able to combine some of those styles of and figuring out what is your style of learning, if you can optimize for that in your daily learning, whether it's having a conversation with somebody, so you're listening to that conversation, you're reading the slides that are on a PowerPoint presentation, you're reading some notes that somebody shared, or you're watching something, um, or you're or you're feeling, touching, feeling, figuring it out for yourself, getting things wrong, and learning by doing. That is a really optimum way for you personally to learn. And so, any way that you can optimize towards that learning style, you will learn more information. And of course, everybody's different, um, but there are free tools online. Just Google it. Uh, what is my learning style? And uh, there will be a quiz for you, certainly, so that you can figure out what is your learning style. But I definitely that would be my one and only tip that I will share uh, personally for that is is really figure out what your learning style is and and optimize for it. Yeah, definitely helpful. Probably uh, in COVID time, the kinesthetic people are less lucky. Uh, mm -hmm. But for the other, yes. And also, in, um, and in, in my opinion, is we have a, prefer, a strong preference, but it's also necessary to, I don't know, to go out of our comfort zone and try something different because you never know. Yeah, actually... Even though you might have a, a primary style of learning, your secondary style will certainly help to further embed that learning. But actually, something that you spoke about earlier with, with regards to, you know, you're sharing your other tips. But then even if you were to, even if the person wasn't to read your information, if you were to share that information personally, what you personally took out of it, you're effectively teaching somebody else that information. And by teaching somebody, that is the highest level in terms of our kind of pyramid of, of, of how we learn something, teaching somebody else. You will never learn something more fully and more deeply than by teaching somebody else that concept. Um, so where we have an opportunity to share that kind of information, I think, is uh, is really, really useful. Have you any other tips that you wanted to, to share from what your team do or about finding time or actually just the learning in itself um, to really grow one skill mm. as a learner? Um if you think, if you always think that you don't have time, probably your first training should be on time management and how to <laughs> prioritize. Why not? It's uh, it's not a shame. And uh, always uh, ask for advices. You, you are not, uh, if someone is not uh, sure 100%, uh, uh, ask for feedbacks to your peer, to your um, colleagues, uh, to everyone. Uh, but at the end of the day, be the owner of your own uh, development mm -hmm. because it's up to us. So we have to be the real owner. Yeah, absolutely. Other can help us, but yeah. Yeah. I think there's a there's actually there's a comment in here from um, one of our uh, viewers who are watching us from LinkedIn that mm -hmm. the promotion of learning and development as a culture you need to assist employees to adopt better uh, better to sorry to adapt better to change because in business everything changes. Um, you know, with that in mind, like because everything changes, one is having to be responsible for their development. But ultimately, actually, this is something that I I learned I learned last week in in my weekly learning, is that a company will own your job but you own your career and you know when an organization needs to make changes like this is a difficult time for some organizations are having to make layoffs really difficult decisions letting whole business units go whole teams go whether regardless of performance etc you know things will happen but because of your ability to learn you will you know always have have further opportunities out there so yeah i, I completely agree that own your own development yeah. A backup plan is always the best option. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can tell you're a coach. Thank you, Sabrina. <laughs> um, 
I actually am shocked that we've gone through so much time because I have at least more 15 minutes more questions to ask you but sadly I will be cut off uh, if I keep going on um but Sabrina we Next finish time. off Yes, please. Actually, we'll we'll have a separate conversation to this. Um, but uh, we ask everybody um, this one question at the end, which is what piece of advice would you like to share with your audience? Perhaps it was advice that you often give to others or maybe it's advice that you've been given yourself. But just one piece of advice to add to our short list of advice, please. No, um, be patient with yourself. I have to be patient with myself if uh, Everything needs time. So be patient. Yeah. If you don't see results straight away, you're not doing things wrong. It's just it's going to take a bit more time. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, a bit of forgiveness. Oh, gosh, I need to remember that myself. Sabrina, this has been a brilliant conversation. I've learned loads. I wish I had my bloody pen with me, though, so I, but I'll have the <laughs> recording afterwards so I can take this down again. Thank you so much for sharing your insights um, and personal tips as well. This has been really, really helpful. And I hope that those of you watching live or listening on the podcast have also found this helpful. So please make that 30 minutes of time a week, 1% of work time. Remember, you own your career, you own your development. Uh, it's up to all of us to keep learning. So Sabrina, thank you so much. And to everybody, thank you very much indeed uh, for, for, for watching and for listening. Um, next week, we will be joined by the wonderful Lisa Lux, where we're going to be talking about gender outside of the workplace. Um, a really, really interesting conversation about gender, about pronouns, um, about being way more than your email signature with Lisa Lux. So I do hope you join me next week uh, for a really fascinating and interesting conversation. And until then, have a wonderful week. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you.